Welcome, friends, to this afternoon session of our monthly meeting. Very happy to see all of you again. We are all fellow travelers, co-travelers to the same destination. Does not matter which country we belong to. Does not matter what religion we belong to. Does not matter where we are born. Does not matter what the color of our skin is. Does not matter what our age is. The spiritual path is common for all of us. It's a discovery of our own self within ourself. We don't have to change religion, don't have to change our language, don't have to change anything. Continue to follow everything. If you discover who you are, you'll see the truth and beauty of your own religion. Otherwise, just a blind faith. Unless we validate and verify statements made to us, they remain blind faith. It's unfortunate that we are told about the truth inside and we go and worship places outside. We don't worship where God lives. Isn't that a better place to worship? God lives in our own self, inside, inside this very body. And what do we do to this body? All kinds of junk stuff in the mind, all kinds of junk food in the stomach, all kinds of hateful thoughts and enjoying terrible gossip about other people's scandals. What is our sense of joy in the house of God? We have gone even further, destroyed the house of God to protect our buildings we built outside. What ignorance, no idea what this human body is, just because we haven't gone in. Check it out. I am not saying these things by reading from any book. My master said, don't believe anything till you experience yourself. He said, this is not a matter of blind faith at all. Experience. Need not experience everything. A little experience gives us a living faith. Yes, I experience myself. If this first step can be right, maybe the second is right. If the first step is not taken, it's blind faith. If you do take a leap of faith for the first step and have an experience, then take the second step, it is not blind faith. A living faith is what lives like living things grow. They all grow. Living things grow. Faith grows if it is real living faith. Every experience will increase the faith. Blind faith never grows. Somebody said something, you believe it. Why rely on somebody else's experience, present or past? If you have the capability of having the experience now, that is why all these perfect living masters have come and told us, go within, go within, stop talking, stop looking out, close your eyes, look inside. Of course, we close our eyes and see nothing but darkness. So we open it, see you can see something. These eyes in the body are designed only to look outside. They will not look inside. They are not meant for that. And we are closing eyes, looking with the same eyes that we will see something. If you are seeing something and close your eyes, you are obstructing what you are seeing outside. It doesn't mean you have gone anywhere inside at all. Closing eyes and sitting for two and a half hours does not mean meditation. It means waste of time. I am telling you the truth. Going within means seeing with the inner eye. We use the inner eye every day. It's not something hidden anywhere. When you imagine something, which eye are you using? You remember your friend. You remember your beloved. And the face of the beloved comes in front of you. Which eye is seeing that? 
That's the inner eye. Imagination only sees with inner eye, not with this physical eyes. Use those eyes. We use every day for so many things, but we are using inner eyes to see outside. Outer eyes to see outside, inner eyes to see outside. Why don't we see inside? We only like to close these eyes if with inner eyes we can see something. You can see with your imaginative eyes everything. Try it. Don't dismiss it. Oh, this is imaginary. It's not worthwhile. See how if you see something inside with your inner eyes, especially something you love, with the inner eyes, what will happen? Your attention will be on the inner eyes and what you're seeing with the inner eyes. The whole process of meditation is withdrawing attention from outside, bringing it inside. The best process. Think inside of something inside. Look inside with inner eyes. Imagine thing, something and use that imagination to be inside. Don't dismiss it. It's imaginary. When you're not trying to use it for imagination, you're using it to put attention inside. Otherwise, we can't draw our attention inside. If you have something to look at, made up by you, because you don't see what is already there, you can make up something, then you'll find something wonderful. And I'm going to share that with you. All imagination comes from the astral plane. When you imagine something, you are using the astral eyes for seeing an astral plane. But it looks imagination only because we have assumed this outside experience to be the only reality. Therefore, it's imaginary. Can you imagine if you were sitting inside imagining? Just imagining you sitting inside a body. Thinking this body is a house you live in. Six-story six house, it's a nice mansion. The different energy centers, the chakras, create levels. Like a level of a house. Sixth floor. You are on the sixth floor. And you feel you're sitting behind the eyes in the sixth floor. Beautiful chamber. You can make it as, as, as good as you like. Furnish it. Beautiful carpet. All nice furniture, nice drapes in that. And you're sitting in the center of it. When you do that, what are you really doing? You are drawing your attention inside. It's just a way of doing it. Now, when you draw your attention inside and concentrate your attention inside, what you think is imaginary will become real. What you always thought was real will become imaginary. Try it out. It does not mean that you are going to be stuck somewhere. You can be here. You will suddenly realize, like when we go to sleep at night and we have a dream, we enjoy or go through the dream morning, we wake full. It does not mean we don't go to sleep again. Oh, we are going to one reality. You don't do that. You know it's a dream. That way you will know it's an astral Experience is a physical experience. You have both. You have a dream experience. You have a physical experience. You have an astral experience. On a daily basis. Every day, enjoy it. Then you will be, if you go further, that means spend reasonable time. Reasonable, reasonable time exploring what can actually be there. Can I see it better? Then I can see with the physical body. You will see your eyes are very sharp. Here, particularly in my age, I have a hard time looking at my newspaper. The optometrist checks up. Oh, you're not even 20, 60 something. They wear some glasses to read. I can read very clearly inside. So can you. No glasses are needed. You can read newspapers very clearly. Both are imaginary newspaper and your eyes and the reading. Attention is drawn inside. I want to touch something. I'm not sure if I'm touching is hard enough. Touch inside hard enough. 
everything, all your sense perceptions are 100% accurate and good inside, not outside. These are weak outside. All these are functioning very weak outside. Inside, they're perfect. Sense perceptions, the power to see, which is not eyes, it's power to see, whether imaginary or anything. The power to see, the power to touch, the power to smell, the power to use these different sense perceptions. The power to always use this is called the astral body. It's not a body separately. We think there's a body which has sense perceptions. No. The sense perceptions, when fitted into this body, become physical bo body. When they're taken off, they become astral body. But there are two things more in both of them. One is life, which we call soul. Because without life, they don't become our awareness. We don't know they, we are there. Life is soul. And another little instrument given to us to use called mind. Mind and soul function in these bodies. Mind generates the sense perceptions. It separates the sense perceptions. You meditate, put your attention inside your imaginary self. The same way like I am suggesting, put your attention inside the physical self. You will find your astral self. Put your attention inside your imaginary self as if you are imaginatively worshipping or praying, or doing something with the inner body, not with the outer body, you will find you don't need sense perception at all. You can still have full perception, the single power of perception of the mind. The mind will see, touch, taste, smell, all in one go. Perception is a mental thing, divided, divided to create this reality, divided to create astral reality, divided to create physical reality. These are Remarkable, remarkable experiences will give you the complete knowledge of the origin of this universe, origin of all universes. Can you imagine all this is inside? We are studying outside what the origin of the universe is. You get all the answers. And supposing you really want to check out, is that more real than this? In the beginning, because it's very difficult to leave the sense of reality of this body, of this world. So we only have glimpses, we get glimpses of it. But when you have the glimpses repeatedly and test them out, you'll find that you can do a lot more there. I want to go and see what happened on a planet called the Mars. Scientists are saying we are trying to find life. They certainly found something, methane gas or something, only a few days back. And they made a big, big statement of it. Can I go there and see it? Can I also go to the past and see what happened? In what is looking like a Mars planet today? You can do that inside. Imagine the possibilities. For a curious person, like I was a very curious person. It's a very exciting thing. To be able to have an exploration of all creation. Physical, dream one, what, how dreams are made, how physical activities are made, how destinies are made. Where do we manufacture the destinies? Where do we manufacture who will be rich and poor and why? How does karma work? All the answers are all inside. Have you ever seen that the inside imaginary body has no weight, has no matter in it? But it can see, it can touch, it can fly, it can walk. We, we do it in our imagination. Now, if you, what is making it imaginary is our trapped in this physical reality as the only reality. That's what's making it imaginary. Now, you release yourself from this by withdrawal of attention. Whole game of discovering yourself is withdrawal of attention to yourself. Not anywhere else, to yourself, your inmost self. 
when we are covered ourselves with blankets i take on two three big blankets is very cold i take on blankets i don't start believing that the blankets are me i still know i am inside the blankets blankets are covering me here we are wearing three thick blankets on ourselves first thickest blanket of our own mind which we call the causal body the thoughts run in it thoughts are the heartbeat of the mind like this body's heart beats thoughts function continuously if thoughts stop mind will die if mind dies astral self and physical self die simultaneously therefore if we are alive our mind is thinking all the time one thought or the other we can be unconscious physically mind is still thinking people undergo surgeries and they get anesthesia and they don't know what is happening here they know a lot of things inside they can tell me we went here we saw this we saw one person told me i never knew that while only in the operation theater when i was having a major surgery i could see the whole wheel of karma how it's operating how time is being created all that experience came and all the thoughts ran around that experience while she was unconscious in the body lying on a surgical table so inside has so much stuff so if the body inside can fly is there anything to stop it from flying nothing supposing it wants to fly to what externally we call the mars it can fly see everything very close it can see things that this body can never see when it flies when we walk we have a speed limit nobody walks at 40 miles an hour we have to run we can't even run at 40 miles an hour we drive a astral body can walk 40 miles an hour can fly 1000 miles an hour no speed limit imagine the possibilities how far you can go in exploring something that looks like creation which is creation the possibilities are immense okay imagine all i am sharing with you is locked up in a small part of our body called our head such a small part everything locked up in this nothing outside try to get in don't you have to don't have to travel don't have to run somewhere we are running all the time we are running i am now running to hear ishwar puri here now i am running to another convention there now i am running to a seminar there i am running to my church now i am running to my gurudwara i am running to my temple i am running to my mosque i am running to my synagogue we are running all the time to find what what we are carrying with us while we are running we carry the whole secret on the very body which is running around looking for something they give the example of a deer there is certain deer which have this musk deer and this beautiful fragrance of the musk even the deer can smell but deer doesn't know where it's coming from runs all over the garden where is coming from where is coming from it's coming from within itself it gets tired and lies down i couldn't find it our state we running around to find something that's lying inside us it's not easy because once you start believing this body is myself you lock yourself in the physical reality so the first step very basic step to start exploring what is inside is to start by exploring if i am not the whole body i am inside the body where could i be that's the very first question you should ask yourself if i am not the body but whoever i am i am inside the body where am i then you examine am i in my feet does it look like it they look too far from me look far from where i am questioning myself look far from my thought hands no come narrower down 
come down, you will come to the head. Okay, head is too big. Let's narrow it down further. Within the head, where am I asking this question from? Close your eyes, say, where is this question coming? Where am I? Just examine, where am I? And you will feel you are right in the center of the head. This question can lead you to where you are. We are not finding a new place. You are finding where am I operating from in this world, in this body, in the head. And you can localize yourself completely to a point. That point has been called the point. Has been called third eye center. Has been called the nukta. Has been called the real location of the self. It just happens that the headquarters of the inner eye, of the inner body, happens to be there also. It's not merely that we are feeling in this physical body. The imaginary body, the so-called inner body, which is overlapping this body right now, and we made it the same size, only slightly bigger, if you examine it carefully, that also has simultaneous location of the third eye center identically where this one is makes it so much easier. If that were somewhere else, you would have to make a journey to go and find where it is. This body's location of our conscious self is at the same place where the inner body's location is when you meditate in that. Big help. Then the next step is easy if you can know this. Next step is concentrate and find what's going on there. What can you see there? What can you imagine there? Where can you move there? How far can you move from there? Experiment with that. And every time you experiment with that, your attention is going up and gradually you are forgetting your hands where they are, physical hands where the body is. Eventually, you won't know where the body is. That becomes real. Sitting here, we say, is imaginary. Sitting there, we'll say, this was imaginary. It happened to Fahin, that Chinese philosopher, who dreamt that he was a butterfly. Just a dream. In the dream, he's flipping his, flapping his wings and going from flower to flower. And seeing the flowers so beautiful, light shining out of the flowers, radiance, radiant flowers. He said, I've never seen this. This might be either heaven or it might be something at a higher level of consciousness. This is not physical. It's much more real than my physical experience has ever seen. And he goes from one flower to another. And then he wakes up and says to himself, I saw a real world. It looked so real. I'm sure it was real. More real than this. But then, in the real world, I'm a butterfly. Am I really only a butterfly? Now dreaming that I am Fahin, the philosopher? Or am, am I Fahin, the philosopher who dreamt that he had a butterfly? Though they don't match. match. The experience of the butterfly was more real than the experience of the philosopher here. What is the truth? So he asked his friends. I had an interesting dream in which I was a butterfly and was flying around in the whole garden. The garden was so beautiful. The friend said, don't be stupid, Fahim. You are a philosopher. You had a dream. And you can't be a butterfly. You realize you are a human being. And you just saw a butterfly in your dream. He said, I never saw the butterfly. I was flying. I never saw. I didn't even see my own self. I could see my wings a little bit. I couldn't see myself. I saw the world from the eyes of a butterfly. I knew I was a butterfly. He said, how can you be so sure? He said, because I was a butterfly. Do 
you realize what he is saying? The self in the physical plane was the same self in the astral plane, no matter what the form. The same self in his dream states, no matter what our form. The self never changes. Everything else changes. Everything that we experience at any stage of consciousness changes. Self never changes. The experiencer never changes. Don't you realize if, the, if we were to define reality, true reality, that which never changes, if there's a definition of reality, the only reality will be the self, the experiencer, nothing else. All else is changing. Self never changes. Self does not change here. Self does not change in a dream. Self does not change in the astral plane. Self does not change in the causal plane. Self does not change in the soul. Self does not change in the totality of soul. Remains the same self. Everything else changes. What about our true home? We say it's permanent, immortal. It has changed. We can't see it now. Even that's a change. It disappeared. If something can disappear, how can you say it's permanent? True home disappeared. Dream disappeared. This physical world disappears. Our life disappears. Bodies disappear. Everything disappears. True home disappears while we are here. The only thing that does not disappear at any time is the self seeing all these things appear and disappear. Self is the only reality. And that's what we say. The true spiritual path is to discover your own self. Nothing more. But not the covering on the self. Don't delude yourself by believing just because you're wearing a nice body, you become a body. You're wearing a body, using it for a limited time. Very limited time. We talk of cosmic time, we talk of physical time of the planet being much older than us. A little experience is much older than us. What can that be? No, the self never is born, never dies. That's the only thing that is never born, never dies, and is always present in our experience, no matter what. Whether we are conscious, unconscious, self continues to be present and existing. So that is why the whole journey of the spiritual path is to our own self, within our own self, not outside. I was mentioning in the morning that our attachments outside cannot be destroyed by practicing detachment, but they can be taken care of by a new attachment. Shake his pizza gone, pizza heart has come. But they're still outside. Supposing I can get a new pizza inside called the, called the pizza on the way to heaven. <laughs> and I see the shop open inside. And they taste the pizza better than any pizza I've ever had. I would love to go and have that pizza. I love to go inside. <laughs> Therefore, it's not merely the pull of the love of the perfect living master that pulls us. The mind loves pleasure. Mind loves pleasure. So, in order to attract us inside, there are a lot of pleasures inside. Better pizzas. <laughs> Anything you have experienced here, all pleasures of this world, better pleasure there. Check it out. Supposing the mind finds better pleasure inside, it will give up trying to find the pleasure outside and enjoy pleasure inside. Nature of the mind to so seek pleasure. Therefore, masters make sure that when you are on track in meditation, trying to go inside, that some pleasurable events happen inside. And you say, now the mind which is trying to keep you out, suddenly the enemy turns into a friend. And a very good friend, let's meditate more. I want to go back to that. That tasty pizza, I'm just giving an example. There are many other better, better uh, pleasures. So you can imagine your own pleasures. I don't need to describe all of them. All that is available in a better, more intense form than outside. 
then it's only when you have those experiences the mind turns from an enemy to your meditation to a friend to your enemy meditation and it pulls you inside all this is well designed the trap if you want to know why are we trapped do you know single cause supposing we say we ought to find a single cause how did i get trapped into this how did i get in such a huge trap i can't get out of it if i were to name one single item which has trapped us is called time t i m e time has trapped us in indian language we call it kaal negative power time kaal is the same as a translation but people sometimes think kaal is some nasty guy sitting up there we try to make him a nasty guy that helps time to keep us here by making him a nasty guy call him satan devil he call him negative power you call him by any name by giving him a name time is very happy i have got you here <laughs> now you look at the negative power positive power get involved in that and time is happy to keep you here somebody asked great master master does have call the negative power that is trapping us here does it also have a soul master said no it's not a being it has no soul it is time time has no soul is a trap is a trap that we have divided the experience of the self into past present and future and created this whole mess for ourselves not without reason of course we want to have the widest possible experience consciousness can have this is just one way of having some experience spread over time now i always share this with people who are interested in understanding the nature of time scientists are baffled by the existence of time because they suddenly found from the time of einsteinian theory of general relativity from those days they found that time is different at different parts of space how can that be that if you are here and your brother is traveling at a very high speed in space his watch functions differently than your watch they have tested this atomic clocks can you imagine in boston i remember seeing a planetarium a scientific model set up how the universe works in that an experiment is shown of two twin brothers going on an experiment one stays on the ground in the planet the other flies in a shuttle at very high speed shuttle it increases speed up to half the velocity of light and then comes back half the velocity of light or they say nothing can go beyond it doesn't even go halfway the brother on the ground says to his friend how are you doing look at your watch he says yes i am doing well we are going to take off and as they take off and speed up the brother on the ground says are you doing okay the man in the ground here are you doing okay he said why are you talking so fast the other man the, the ground man then slows the other man becomes fast as the velocity of the vehicle picks up the man at the bottom is saying ah oh, you okay he said, why are you talking like that and this man why are you talking so fast ultimately they can't understand each other as the speed picks up speed picks up to half the velocity this man sitting on the on the vehicle looks at time it's about 5 minutes i should go back so turns back and returns to the planet his twin brother grew up had a family had children grandchildren at the ripe old age of 75 died and for him it was 5 minutes this is true scientifically how can time be so different today they have come to the conclusion our even feeling of time that time is flowing 
is dependent on the rate of acceleration at which this earth is moving or the whole galaxy is moving that the rate of acceleration determines our experience of time there's scientific fact of course internally you can check all these things but i'm talking is externally what they try to find out when they are studying time so much and they can't find the answer you can find it in an instant insight how will you find out you will know that we are all living in now after a minute also it will be now yesterday was also now we are not in yesterday we were in now we won't be tomorrow when tomorrow comes we'll be in now we are always in now now is our only present rest is past or future now think of it now has no time at all zero a billionth of a second will make it past before that will be future we are living in a timeless now right here physically we think we are trapped by time but there is no time we are living in zero time examine carefully that we have no time in the present at all and then how are we feeling that we are living in the present we are calling the immediate past as present what is happening few seconds back we are calling present there is no no real time in now at all and we cannot escape the now nobody can say i want to live in yesterday you can't do it not in the physical world in the physical world we are trapped in a timeless now therefore somebody presented a book to me power in the power of the now live in the now the book said live in the now i want to meet anybody in the world not living in the now we are all living in the now there is no other place no other time to live in except the now and here here and now is always there so imagine living in a timeless now and experiencing time so obviously there is some illusion somewhere no it's not an illusion it's function of one single thing in the mind called memory we are continuously remembering what happened few seconds ago and we call it present we are calling recent past as present a little further down we call it past very close we call present they no real present at all they are calling miscall misnaming the immediate past as present okay doesn't make sense in the argument but doesn't make sense in the experience look what what kind of illusion this is that we are living in a timeless now but recent past we are calling present and thinking it is different from the remote past there no difference one is a few seconds old one is a few hours old few minutes old okay all right let us assume that now is merely a flow of the future into the past and just is passing through the no time creates a feeling of past of present it's just a future flowing we all assume there's a future it always comes next minute always comes next second always comes next hour always comes next year always comes therefore we are certain future is there i want to explain how we think future is there future is there because our mind has a capacity to hope i hope this happens it has a capacity to fear i am afraid this will happen it has a capacity to anticipate i think this will happen supposing these three things are taken away from the mind there is no future examine it carefully if this function of the mind were to be taken away future will be gone then how are we creating future by this function of the mind by hoping fearing anticipating 
all these three take time in the mind therefore they are happening in the past they cannot happen in the now future is being created in the past if you see carefully the life we are living in the physical plane has no future no present only past it's looking like present and future because immediate past immediate thinking of hoping and fearing is being creating something we call future otherwise it doesn't exist at all so we are looking at time the flow of time as if it is something that's coming and going through us rapidly or we are moving on it where is nothing of the sort is happening except we are reliving a memory of a past but you can't have a memory if it never happened you can't remember something it never happened unless somebody cleverly puts a little chip or a little capsule of memory is into your head you will think is your memory that happens they've experimented they experimented recently because before they could do it on human being they do it on mice they train the mice to go through a maze and they maze the mice go like that first they hit against that because it's dark they hit then once they learn they hit two, once or twice then they hit less then they know the way they have put one mouse who learned the way and then transferred a brain transfer of the mouse into the second mouse who had never learned anything and when the second mouse was put in it went exactly well learned you know, they transfer the memory of one mouse into another and the memory the second mouse acted like it was his its own memory therefore when we are using only memory to create this life which is the truth and we don't remember when it happened which we are remembering some chip has been placed in our consciousness somewhere you want to see where it is placed i'm sure you like to see it inside not on the physical level not in the astral level no it's still higher mental level you withdraw your attention from the physical body become unaware of the physical body withdraw your attention from the sensory perceptions become unaware of sensory perceptions remain very conscious of how the mind functions and then go within the mind and you will see all the little mental chips have been created to create destinies in our life planted there and we think it's all happening here or oh, verifiable this is not something i'm trying to make up i am saying go in and see everything i am saying is all to be validated verified by you personally otherwise it's just a tall story if you don't verify it's just a story being told make it real knowledge real knowledge is to go and actually see these things so you will be amazed how destinies are created how we picked up our own destinies why we picked up this particular destiny why we are trapped in this destiny what arrangement did we make to get out of it we get trapped all that is the self doing the self generated all this experience if time is such a big trap and we as conscious entities conscious being souls as souls just to have a different experience got into this big trap were we stupid souls not intelligent enough to know that we can get trapped no we were very intelligent we made sure if such a situation happens that we say end this program we've had enough of this creation we have a, made our own arrangement for finding a way out our own arrangement inside ourselves the arrangement will be that when we project the experiences outside within that experience we'll project somebody like ourselves in human form at the human life level who will come tell us go inside that's the that's the place to find no nobody from outside made this 
when did we make it before we entered even the mind before we entered into any experience of time and space that's when we made the arrangement very intelligent souls super intelligent when we are tired of an experience and want to go back we made an arrangement inside that the self itself will step out appear to be outside because we are only looking outside in this trap therefore our own self will appear as somebody else and that somebody else will have lot of competitors lot of other people teachers they will say come to our temple we will teach you come to this place we will teach you come to our meditation session we will teach you but that one will say don't go anywhere go inside yourself and we'll tell you the way inside if you are too stuck he'll pull you from inside with his love the love will pull you and you will feel am i be am i being pulled outside am i being pulled inside they'll both happen at the same time because that's just a reflection of what is happening inside it is not something that uh, uh, we have not designed all we have designed in a time table i like to have the roller coaster experience ups and downs great i like to have an experience where there are opposites where i belong to the truth timelessness has no opposite if there is no time and space there is nothing opposite you cannot create opposites if there is no time and space so we create time and space to have an opposite experience of our long term experience why because when we see the opposite of anything with our consciousness here we appreciate it more if somebody has never had pain his appreciation of pleasure will be much less than one who has seen pain than seen pleasure if one has never seen darkness he cannot see even light or appreciate it if he has seen darkness he will appreciate light the nature of consciousness the appreciation for the positive grows if you have had an experience of the negative there is no duality in our true state so we create duality and the duality pairs of opposites are created in three phases causal astral physical they all duality all pairs of opposites high and low big and small pain and pleasure day and night darkness and light everything is in positive pairs of opposites and once you create pairs of opposites this whole creation becomes an opposite of the one where there is no pair of opposite can you imagine that within a non duality with a something there is no pair of opposite no duality at all we can make a duality by artificially creating an opposite of it and that becomes the duality we pull out duality disappears but we appreciate non duality much more after experiencing duality people sometimes ask the simple question what the purpose of life what the purpose of this whole creation here is the purpose of this whole creation to appreciate our true self and true nature more fully we see the beauty the bliss the joy of our own self far more if you have seen something else then if you are just there that is why just in a story form they say there are some souls are still living in their true home in a state of immortality permanently they are living there we were also there living there we thought we were a little more adventurous we want to see what else can we do consciousness is such a big power consciousness can be creative power for anything it becomes conscious of that's how creation takes place consciousness becomes conscious of anything that's creation that's how all creation is existing because of consciousness so let's let's create something different and we created world of pain and pleasure oh wow so terrible why terrible if it's both pain and pleasure why should we call it terrible you know why because it is in time when it pleasure is on time flies 
and pain is on time extends if we had equal time of pain and pleasure which is there true it doesn't look like that it looks like pleasure went quickly and pain was a long moment oscar wilde had written an essay on suffering what is suffering he says suffering is one long moment when a moment looks too long you are suffering if it passes quickly you are going to have a good time so that is why it looks like that the creation here is not balanced it is but of the nature of time we think is there more suffering here so that's good that we feel like that then we appreciate our true self much better great reason for a creation not from this point of view from that point of view from the true point of view where the self belongs what the true self really is take these basic steps you discover first of all this physical reality is not the only reality not difficult to do it put attention inside to make it easy for attention to be drawn inside i always say think this body of ours is a house we live in start from there this is a house we live in is shaped like a body our consciousness our wakeful self is occupying this house inside the head and it sometimes like to rest the bedroom is not there bedroom is the fifth floor and fourth floor which is true our bedroom is not at the third eye center when we want to rest in the physical body have dreams and so on we are not here we actually the notional self which i am talking of is behind the eyes actually drops it drops in this body the throat when we are dreaming heart when we are having deep sleep there are some yogic practices which can keep you semi awake and semi aware of your state of being and they can discover that these chakras are used for dreaming state and this is for the deep sleep state and sometimes you can have yogic practices to concentrate your attention on these centers and have unusual experiences i tried those things long ago but for you easy way to judge this is at night when you are tired going to sleep touch your eyes right now wakeful state anybody with eyes closed can touch their eyes when you're sleepy in bed try touch your eyes you touch your nose and think you're touching your eyes how can that be that that notional point of your self where the self is in the body is dropping body is barely being used as a conscious thing recovering upon consciousness and the consciousness moves according to the state of being in which you are similarly the when you close your eyes your self is not really behind it's almost in forward part of the eye when you withdraw attention it goes virtually almost to a line where the ears are deep meditation when you go to that point you will not be aware of the body it's a remarkable thing how we are using a physical body and traveling within it moving within it to attain these levels of awareness so this is a great thing this human body a remarkable thing most wonderful thing you can find everything in it explore it i'm very happy to join you again this month and we meet next month again the dates are known now you can check with the jonathan and you can announce the dates of the future meetings if you can make it i'll be very happy to see all of you again there are some people who have come for the first time and they asked for a couple of minutes of time i'll certainly see them now after this meeting and i wish all of you god speed have a nice journey back enjoy yourself remember what we talked about here remember what you heard practice practice don't leave it here we sometimes go to these nice talks and the talk goes in from one ear and when we leave it slowly slips out from the other ear my wife wanted to check once that do people really come to hear you 
और इट्स अ सोशल गैदरिंग शी थॉट इट इज़ अ सोशल गैदरिंग दे वॉन्ट टू मीट देयर फ्रेंड्स वंस इन ए मंथ दे कम फॉर मीटिंग फ्रेंड्स एंड नो बडी रियली हेयर्स यू सो शी डिड अ क्लेवर एक्सपेरिमेंट आउट ऑफ द गेस्ट वुड कम एंड दैट स्पेशली हैपन इन ब्रूस विस्कॉन्सन शी वुड इन्वाइट सेवन और एट पीपल विद होम शी बिकेम फ्रेंड्स कम एंड हैव डिनर सो शी वुड गिव दैम डिनर शी एज ए हाउस देर ही गिव अ डिनर देन आस्क हाउ आर दिस वॉज टॉक टूडे ओ वंडरफुल वेरी गुड वॉट डिड यू से नो बडी गुड डे शी सेट सी आई टोल्ड यू दे डेवर हियर यू so that is why i am saying please practice set check of these things some of these things they are all within your reach don't think they are beyond you they are within your reach just pay attention to it thank you very much for your patient listening